Hello and welcome to Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalan country at 2NCR Lismore and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com and in New Zealand on Fresh FM as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network. This is Peter Lena and I want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where you are listening. They took care of these lands sustainably for hundreds of thousands of years and then shared this land with us at great cost to their own lives. I want to honour and thank them for the work they have done and continue to do to care for country and to sit on the earth. I also want to thank the fairies and crones who came before us in history to fight for our human rights to love fiercely. Fierce. 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 We're talking to Aidan Gentle, project leader for Queer Family in the Northern Rivers. Thank Hi, you. Peter. How are you? Great. What is Queer Family to you? Queer Family is a group of people in the Northern Rivers who are coming together to form community, to connect, to reduce social isolation and to improve mental health. At the moment, you've got an event happening with Sophie LaBelle, who we're going to be chatting to in a moment. Yeah, that's right. So is that what you're doing? You're putting on events and people are coming? It's a bit of a mixed bag. What we started out doing was putting on dinners and barbecues and things like that. Just very casual, low-key ways for people to meet. We've got a couple of major events, one of which is Sophie LaBelle Show, and we're bringing queer stories up to Mullumbindi. We're normally a little bit more low-key, but we were lucky enough to secure some funding from the Byron Shire Council to help us to bring these major events to the region. It's a community initiatives grant. We chatted to Aidan once before on the program about the shedding community. That's right. That's actually how we family started, Rainbow Shedders event. I interviewed all 53 adults and nine children who were there, and I patted the three dogs as well. <laughs> The outcome of that research was that there was a real need for queer-friendly events to be held in the area. There weren't things happening um, over this way. People were feeling very isolated. I heard a lot of very sad stories that that need was there, so we thought, why not do it? What is a safe space for queers? Any space that people from our community can come together and be themselves. We have that quite interesting mixture of people. We're not trying to create a space just for women, for example, or men or trans people or younger people or older people. We're creating a space for anyone who feels they want to be part of the community because they identify or maybe they're still questioning their gender or sexuality or, or allies as well. It's a space for love and acceptance and understanding and to support each other. How do you identify? Queer or genderqueer or trans or non-binary. All of those terms fit me. What's it like living in Mullumbimby? It's a little bit invisibilising for me personally, and that's not specific to Mullum, that's anywhere really, because you can't look at me and tell that I'm genderqueer. But because the people here are so kind and accepting, I found that you don't tend to face some of the transphobia and homophobia that you might face in other places. Even though people don't really understand your identity, they're very accepting and open and, and loving about people's differences. But on the flip side, it does feel quite isolating for two reasons. One, we're in a regional area, so there's just less of us. More of a challenge to build community, which is exactly why something like Queer Family is really useful. The second part, though, which is a bit of a challenge in this region, uh, there is a great interest in gender, but from a very male and female binary perspective. So that's been quite challenging for me because a lot of the groups and social spaces are very targeted towards men or women and both of those exclude me. I found that quite challenging and quite surprising because I've never actually encountered that anywhere else where I've lived. So you haven't experienced that elsewhere in cities? No, no. There hasn't been this focus on gender in the same way. There are obviously women's spaces and there are obviously activities that are male-dominated or female-dominated, but... I've never actually seen so many advertisements on Facebook which have been, this is a men's group, this is a women's group. It was really striking. Have you experienced transphobia here? Call it more microaggressions rather than out-and-out transphobia. And a lot of that is based on ignorance rather than any maliciousness. 
you know, in Sydney or Melbourne or any other major city, there's queer ghettos, so to speak, where your identity is on show and it's well represented. But here it is definitely a lot more hidden. I think that would be even more challenging for uh, younger people and those who haven't found their community yet. Those people are actually going to ask things like your pronouns and remember them and, and not argue about whether or not they is able to be used as a singular pronoun, for example. You know, that, that sort of microaggression is something that I face a lot. The challenges are in some ways nicer around here because people are kind and very free-spirited and open to different in a way that some other areas aren't. But there is that isolation factor and that invisible factor, just a general lack of education as well, and expecting me or someone like me to do all of that educating for them can also be quite a burden because I'm very open about my gender and I think it's important to be visible and to be a representative. I get a lot of questions which are often very innocent and very curious, but it takes a lot of energy to be constantly explaining your identity to basically to strangers. This show goes out all over Australia on the Community Radio Network. Mm -hmm. Is there a place that you've been to get support? Where can people go if they're confused or even if they just want to be a good ally? Yeah, that's a great question. Certainly in New South Wales, ACON has a presence in a lot of the regional areas. So ACON's a good place to start. Uh, younger people should definitely check out 2010 or Why Gender as good places to get information and support. The whole community can call Q Life the LGBTQIA plus counselling line. They've got opening hours, but check the website for more information. All of those organisations are run by queer people for queer people, so it's community looking after community. There's a lot of other organisations doing good work, but they're the major ones that wherever you are um, in the state, at least, you should be able to access and support. Just like your beautiful queer family. Yeah, where can that's people, right. <laughs> where can people find that? Yeah, that's a great question too. Uh, we've got a Facebook page. If you just look up queer family, you can connect with us through there. I've been getting a lot of messages from people who maybe they're not out yet. They've got some mental health stuff going on. They're already a bit anxious about turning up to an event. So I've been doing a lot of messaging backwards and forwards with people or to meet up one-on-one -on -one with people just to make them feel a bit more safe and at ease. Us older people probably remember the first time we actually managed to go to a gay bar or to a queer event and how difficult that was and how maybe we passed by the door multiple times before we plucked up the courage to go in. Because we know it's pretty anxiety provoking to meet new people and to, to do a new thing. And, but it is exciting and there are lots of queer people out there and so you should definitely give it a go and get in touch. And of course, those bigger events can be safer too, like when you're bringing amazing activists to town or even queer oh, stories. Yes. Absolutely. Queer stories is going to be amazing. That's on the 14th of March in Mullum. We're having a community barbecue beforehand to socialise, but also to help raise money for queer families so we can keep doing more and more things. I know you're looking forward to it too, Peter. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> can I play yep. a song so for you? Just We Are Family. Let's go with that anthem okay. because that's spot on.
I love the name of your program, Fierce. That's so apt. That's it. Fierce love, fierce life, fierce inquiry. Yes. Yay. We love it too. <laughs> we brunch. We party. We study. We test. From up north to down south. From east to west and everywhere in between. We test for HIV and STIs four times a year. It's not hard, just a small prick and a few quick swabs will get the job done. It's who we are. It's what we do. Find your nearest testing location at endinghiv.org.au. Hi, this is Aiden Gentle. My pronouns are they, them. And I'm from Queer Family, here encouraging you to be queer as, and you're listening to Fierce. Sophie LaBelle is the incredibly talented cartoonist behind Assigned Male Comics. Sophie's from Quebec, but she now lives in Finland, and we're very excited to have brought her all the way out here to Australia and to our tiny little towns. Anyone who's trans and gender diverse, anyone who's in the queer community, or anyone who just wants to learn more about trans stuff should definitely check out her work. Do you read the comics and have they helped you? I have read the comics. I have a trans niece as well who I have showed the comics to who can look up to her as a role model. She doesn't really understand all of the content yet, but she certainly is excited to have representation of somebody who's doing really well from the trans community. And uh, she's incredible. She's very funny and we're really lucky to have her. Well, thank you so much, Aidan Gentle, for all you're doing in the community and welcome, Sophie LaBelle. Hello. How's it going in Malambimbi? It's very warm. It's currently minus 25 in Montreal. So being here feels very special. What are the key themes you're using to empower your community through your art? Humor, I guess. And I talk a lot about microaggression that trans people face. Let me ask you about your experience of transphobia, because your comics are a lot about the experience of trans people. Are you happy to share any experiences of your childhood and what it was like for you? Oh, not really. I don't talk uh, about that in the media because usually uh, that's what all the media focus on, you know, um, trying to get trans people to talk about their experience and their journey rather than what they're doing, actually. Okay. How can someone be a great ally? Stop killing trans people. Uh, that would be great. Um, also, you know, just uh, having basic human decency and not do or say things that could potentially harm us. When you say stop killing trans people, some of our listeners in Australia won't even know that trans people are being killed. Is that something that's happening all over the world? Because you travel the world a lot. Oh, yeah. Our communities, uh, you know, are constantly facing uh, issues of, um, you know, very violent transphobia, but also suicide. And uh, access to care is so hard that, you know, in many different ways, um, suicide is often the, the result of transphobia. Do you have any idea about why the wider community is so scared of gender? Oh, well, I've got different uh, ideas about why. Um, well, first, uh, colonialism. Colonialism has played a huge role into spreading transphobia and, you know, this idea that gender must be binary in order to spread the race. It's a very uh, strong uh, rhetoric that we find in every colonialist society. Tell us about your comics. How did you get started? Well, I first uh, started to make these comics uh, to entertain my uh, friends at school, my trans friends at school, and um, and yeah, started putting them on the internet and gained traction and through several viral pictures, uh, I ended up making a job out of it, but I didn't study in art at all. I was studying to become an elementary school teacher and I didn't, you know, think of myself as an artist at first. And, uh, and so, yeah, I managed to uh, make a living on it. I love your art. Your images are so styled. They're beautiful images. Thank and, you. <laughs> and of course, they're very educational for me too. I'm glad to hear it. When I did some research to get to know you online... 
I went to YouTube to look at your comics. And I, oh, God, don't do that. I know, because what I found was all these people very offended. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, they don't like, um, you know, empowered trans people. Why? So, uh, it's because it threatens their worldview. Um, you know, this idea that gender isn't biology, for example, and stuff like that. Um, while, you know, we shove that in people's face since they're born, so uh, challenges a lot of people. So when did you know that you were not? A teacher? Yeah. You know, I had doubts when I was a kid, when uh, people were asking me what I would grow up to be, and I would tell them that I, I wanted to become a cartoonist, and, you know, they were telling me that it wasn't a real job, so... Uh, I had to fight very hard against that, against the, the push of society towards a lucrative job instead of art. I had to come out uh, to my parents as a cartoonist, and uh, it was very scary. Wow, so you knew as a child that you wanted to be a cartoonist. You had an awareness that that, that was your destiny in some way. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Would you call it community-based art? Well, it's meant for trans people, and that's very rare. Whenever you see media about trans people, you know, on the news or a documentaries or even TV shows, it's always meant for people who aren't trans, as if, you know, there wasn't any trans people in the audience. So there's always this point of view that's very authorizing. You know, it makes us an other that people need to learn about as if we weren't already there, you know? And so, uh, yeah, just making art for our own communities, um, art that's targeted at trans people themselves, is very revolutionary for, for many people. And so you've been doing the comics, and now you're traveling the world giving talks. Yes. What do you talk about? <laughs> um, well, I talk about uh, my work. I talk about the things that... Um, that makes uh, my work so, uh, you know, that how, how people react to my work and I answer questions and I sign books. All over the world, in libraries, there's trans people reading stories to children. And just recently, here in our country, we've had a lot of transphobia and we've had people protesting in a negative way in front of the children, trying to stop the trans people reading Stories. I've never heard of that. I've heard children. drag queen reading, but not like trans people reading. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's my ignorance then. <laughs> oh, okay. So d stopping drag queens from reading. Thank you for clarifying that. I've read about it in America. Do you face anything like that when you're traveling the world giving talks? No, usually it's only talks to uh, my, like, it's my readers and my fans who come. So. Oh, that's great. And what's it like to travel the world and just meet trans people everywhere and to be able to connect with them? You know, it's very different to other people's experience having to travel and try to connect with people on apps or at bars. It was very empowering finding, you know, fam family everywhere and uh, you can find that community anywhere you go. Who I relate to in, uh, in ways I don't with people who aren't trans or queer. Yeah. How can people find your comics to read them? Oh, they're, they're all online. Uh, you can type my name in a search engine and you'll find me. Sophie LaBelle. Yes. And the comic is called Assigned Mail. Is there a song that you love that I could play on the radio now? Uh, sure. Uh, how about a song from the musical Dear Heaven Anson, uh, Waving Through a Window? And why this song? Because I really love musicals, I, lo I love that one in particular. I feel it resonates with a lot of queer people. I want to see the Assigned Male musical. <laughs> Maybe someday, yes. Would you star in it? No, no. <laughs> okay. A terrible singer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all you're doing all over the world for it's our a community. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Learned to slam on the brake Before I even turn the key Before I make the mistake Before I lead with the worst of me I give them no reason to stare 
No slipping up if you slip away. So I got nothing to share. No, I got nothing to say. Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun because you've learned, because you've learned. Outside, always looking in. Will I ever be more than I've always been? 'Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, waving through a window. Oh, I try to speak, but nobody can hear. So I wait around for an answer to appear. While I'm watch, watch, watching people pass. I'm waving through a window. Can anybody see? Anybody waving back at me? We start with stars in our eyes. We start believing that we belong. But every sun doesn't rise, and no one tells you where you went wrong. A step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun, because you've learned. Because you've learned. On the outside, always looking in. Will I ever be more than I've always been? 'Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. Falling in a forest and there's nobody around. Do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? When you're falling in a forest and there's nobody around, do you ever really crash or even make a sound? Did I even make a sound? Did I Make a sound. On the outside, always looking in. Will I ever be more than I've always been? 'Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, waving through the window. I try to speak, but nobody can hear. So I. Thank you for listening to Fierce. Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalung Country at 2NCR Lismore, and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com, and in New Zealand on Fresh FM, as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network.